Let's talk about another piece of news and then we'll jump into the event itself. Of course, we're talking Starcade 1990 today from the torch in December of 90. There's a report that Larry Zabisco, who is the current AWA world heavyweight champion had all but retired the AWA by agreeing to go to work for WCW and Wade Keller would report that he could be a wrestler or he could be the host of, uh, worldwide wrestling or perhaps both. Uh, he showed up at Monday's tapings, but supposedly Jim Hurd didn't know about it ahead of time. So he ordered none of the material to be used again, wrestling politics. Uh, it would continue in the torch that negotiations are still ongoing. So we showed up to the tapings without actually being under contract, but I guess the understanding being that he was going to be coming in, but here's the thing that jumped off the page to me in the torch. Larry Zabisco is regarded by many as being the best talker in the business. This is December of 90. I've always thought Larry was a great promo. I don't know if I would have classified him as the best talker in the business in any year. Uh, what do you remember about Zabisco coming to WCW at the time being the AWA champ, perhaps heard not being on board with it, or at least not informed of it. And as a result, not wanting to use him right away. And then Wade's, I don't know, suggestion that perhaps Larry was the best talker in the biz. I think Wade has had a little bit of Minnesota bias. Yeah. Larry was the son of law of Vergania. Larry got a, you know, it was very prominent in the AWA before going to work with Bruno in my program in New York. Uh, but in Wade's opinion, was, was Larry a good talker? Absolutely. We both agree with that. He's a great talker. Was he the very best talker? I don't know about that. That covers a lot of ground. But it's just another classic example of a, a poor communication, trying to kayfabe yourself inside the business, not being forthright, coming, you know, discussing things. I'll show you. I'll show you. It's silly. It's ninth grade shit. So anyhow, uh, I thought Larry's. I wasn't sure how much more fuel was in the tank for Larry emotionally. Would he, would he, would he sell out emotionally to become, to be, a a, a, a bell to bell star again, uh, or was he more distant and more suited to be a talker could have been somebody's manager and then get a case to get into this, the fray, uh, or he could have been a commentator, which is what he ended up doing. I thought Larry's commentating work was better suited for him at that time than being a wrestler. He's talented, no doubt, but I don't know who all's, I guess, I don't know who, who, I can't remember who brought him in. Who would that be? Dusty? Yeah, it is curious, you know, I mean, is it Ole? Is it Dusty? Is it Kevin Sullivan? It might've been Ole. Yeah. Ole was a, a loyal to Vern. Mm. Cause Vern broke Ole in. Ole was a big, uh, rough, tough guy from Wisconsin. And Ole played football at Colorado. The great Ole story is in the camp. You know, he, he'd run rush shot through the camp, beat a lot of chaperones. And, uh, so he got to wrestle a real wrestler that had been broken in and was already working. So he said, I'll take the little one, which was Hodge. Big mistake. Ole found out just how tough he wasn't. <laughs> He let a 200 pound guy who just Hodge could have Hodge could have done strange and, uh, unsavory things to young Ole at that point in time, if you'd chosen to. So, uh, anyway, but I, that might've been an Ole deal. Cause I never remember dusty being overly fond of Larry and, and Tony Schiavone could probably tell you that answer that better than I, cause he worked with him a lot. I did not, but I did try to get Larry a job in WWE. I thought he would be a good. Good fit for that because we're 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 on the cusp of producing a lot more television, a lot more product, a lot more content, and uh, we're going to need need other announcers. So, uh, but that didn't work out. I think Vince has some little, little lasting feelings about uh, uh, oh about the Larry that I assume were was over the uh, Bruno thing and payoffs. It's always cash and creative. You search this shit all you want. If it's not cash or creative, then it's going to be something very new and very unique. Cash or creative is always the culprit for those pissing contests. 
Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.